ओके डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो वेरी गुड इवनिंग आई एम योर साइकेट फैकल्टी डॉक्टर धर्मेंद्र सिंह बेसिकली टुडे वी हैव एफ एम जी स्प्रिंट द साइकेट्री लेक्चर्स आई ट्राई टू मेक वन लाइनर्स एंड ट्राई टू कवर द ऑलमोस्ट ऑल टॉपिक्स इन साइकेट्री सो इफ यूल सी इन माइनर सब्जेक्ट्स बेसिकली इन साइकेट्री दे यूजली इफ यूल सी द सिम्टम्स रिलेटेड डायग्नोसिस psychopharmacology usually they ask the 8 to 10 mcqs from usually from the psychiatry so putting a, as in all my lectures i am saying that putting the less effort in minor subjects and getting a more output it's always a you know we can say it's under it comes under smart study so we will start uh, we don't have much time so we will start the first topic i hope you prepared well and now you are going for the revision so if you have any query in between i'll try to see and so to bhejna sir team ki bhej do whatsapp pe so i hope you prepared well and now you are just doing the revision the very important topic in psychiatry first schizophrenia there are two mcq they ask number one that who has given the name dementia precox and the answer is emil kreplin later on the schizophrenia the name was given by eugen bloiler eugen bloiler basically given the four symptoms and the every symptom starts from a so the 4a of bloiler came into the limelight and these four a words you know we have ambivalence we have alogia affective blunting and autism loss of desire to achieve goal ambivalence alogia poverty of speech affective blunting and the autism later on the one mcq they ask from the kurt schneider 11 first rank symptoms he has given the first rank symptoms he told that these symptoms are so important that even one symptom is there we can make a diagnosis of schizophrenia okay so uh, among these 11 symptoms usually they ask the mcq that out of these 11 symptom all of the following are uh, first rank symptom except okay and in this you just remember the 11 names uh, the meaning i hope you already gone through and you know that these 11 symptom so what, what they can ask uh, number 1 thought echo third person hallucination talking about him third person hallucination commenting on action the person like a running commentary there are three mad phenomena mad affect patient feels that somebody is controlling his emotion or affect mad volition or we call it a mad act that patient is doing some action but patient is saying i am not doing it somebody is forcing me to do that and mad impulse patient feels like he or she is having some urge to do although they don't want to do it so we call it a three three mad phenomena okay mad phenomenon mad affect mad impulse and mad act then we have three thought alienation phenomena it comes under thought possession later on in mental status examination i uh, i have described there so in this basically we have thought insertion thought withdrawal and thought broadcasting thought insertion patient feels that i have thought in my mind uh, but these thoughts are not my thoughts somebody inserted into my mind okay uh, namaste namaste so any anybody has any mcq any query please uh, write on chat box i i'm in between also seeing the chat box also so i'll try to uh, give the answer what we told patient will say sir i am not able to talk to you why because somebody took away my thought i don't have thoughts in my mind and thought broadcasting patient thinks that whatever he or she think everybody comes to know in surrounding sir my thoughts in my the building in my colony everybody comes to know whatever i am thinking or i think thought broadcasting 
by definition the people are aware about his or her thought through some media media like tv through radio some channel should be there okay then delusional perception and somatic passivity so there are 11 first rank symptoms among these usually they ask mcq here that all of the following are first rank symptom except and you should know that these 11 in number later on uh, you know that we when we talk about schizophrenia we say that there are these symptoms are in three domains the first is positive symptom second is negative symptom okay and third we say the cognitive domain the positive symptoms are what the positive symptoms negative symptoms and cognitive domain the positive symptoms are delusions and hallucination why we call them positive we call them positive we call them positive because we call them positive because once we start the medication patient responding well to the medication that's why we call them positive so patient come to us patient is having more delusion or hallucination we are not happy you know for the patient that because he is suffering from schizophrenia we are happy that we know that these are positive symptom we will going to start the antipsychotic and patient will respond very well so we call them positive symptom negative symptoms as till now you know we are struggling with these negative symptom by definition the negative symptoms are symptom which have a poor response to the antipsychotics or medication that the negative symptoms are we have you know a logia we have a volition a social anhedonia apathy and attention deficit so allogia is what poverty of speech poverty of poverty of speech patient don't speak much patient don't initiate conversation okay he gives the answer in yes no a social patient having a social withdrawal anhedonia loss of pleasure in activities which were pleasurable previously okay and apathy an attention deficit okay uh, patient doesn't showing you know he doesn't show any enthusiasm uh, attention deficit any psychiatric disorder including schizophrenia they affect the higher mental function and patient always complain about the decrease attention concentration memory okay uh, attention deficit and we have motor symptoms catatonic symptoms catatonic symptoms in this slide i have written the catatonic symptoms we have basically the stupor the posturing the echolalia echopraxia you must have learned about it echolalia is means repetition of words or sentences echopraxia repetition of action action okay action yeah uh, stupor patient in stupor they are usually asking uh, what they ask that stupor person is actually mute so mutism person is immobile immobility but person having a retention of consciousness retention of consciousness so be very careful about it usually they ask about that all of the following are true regarding stupor except and the answer is uh, they give the op option mute immobile retention of conscience consciousness and one more option how we do how do we know that person is having a retention of consciousness suppose patient is lying on a bed you moving any object in front of eye of the patient and patient you know basically follow the object so we call it a you know the mutism immobile and retention of consciousness so stupor posturing echolalia and echopraxia in according to diagnosis uh, in icd and dsm in icd we have two diagnoses one is schizophrenia and second is acute psychosis acute psychosis uh, in making a diagnosis of schizophrenia we require at least one month or more duration so according to icd if we have a symptoms of schizophrenia at least one month or symptoms you know the, the the criteria we have one month or more we call it a schizophrenia if symptoms are there but the duration is less than one month then we call it a 
acute psychosis so sometimes they say acute psychosis sometimes they acute and transient psychosis they basically one one stressor in acute psychosis is fever they usually start with the fever the patient had a fever after two three days then they will uh, you know describe the delusions hallucinations and they will give the history of what yeah hello hello and is dami yeah okay so the fever okay fever is one of the stressor in acute and transient psychosis examiner can start the history with the acute psychosis uh, if with the fever okay in dsm according to uh, dsm uh, how we make a diagnosis we have three important diagnosis in dsm one is schizophrenia second is is any form disorder third is brief psychotic okay brief psychotic disorder the schizophrenia is basically six months or more the duration criteria in dsm schizophrenia schizophrenic form one to six months and brief psychotic disorder less than so that you that you should know very good evening very good evening Sir khan yeah so schizophrenia and acute psychosis in icd schizophrenia schizophrenic form and brief psychotic disorder in the in the dsm okay types of schizophrenia you know the paranoid okay the simple the hebephrenic the catatonic okay we have undifferentiated they say the most common type is paranoid okay hebephrenic having an early onset and poor prognosis simple name is simple but it is not so simple why because it has only negative symptom that's why it has a worse prognosis so there are three four mcq they ask most common type answer is paranoid if they say uh, you know early onset and poor prognosis answer is hebephrenic if they say the worst prognosis answer is simple okay and if they say the best prognosis then the answer is what catatonic schizophrenia but currently i want to tell you that uh, the in current in icd 11 and the dsm 5 we all is you know okay icd 11 and dsm 5 is the category have been removed the current studies they say that they don't you know support the the data don't support that we have a we have a you know uh, we can have various subcategory of schizophrenia so the current according to current the classificatory system of psychiatry icd 11 and dsm 5 schizophrenia is schizophrenia there is no subtype of schizophrenia all subtypes have been removed okay catatonia the best prognosis as i mentioned uh, if they ask the the treatment uh, of catatonia the usually we don't know the the etiology is basically there are multiple hypotheses about the etiology of catatonia but in catatonic schizophrenia the treatment is what iv lorazepam initially we give the iv lorazepam the patient is not responding well we go for the ect okay we go for the ect so that you have to remember okay in schizophrenia few more important mcq they ask usually psychopharmacology the antipsychotic they ask so if they ask the treatment resistant schizophrenia okay the drug of choice is what clozapin about clozapin they ask many mcqs one is treatment resistant schizophrenia second they ask the clozapin basically it's a most common cause of metabolic syndrome most common cause of metabolic syndrome most common cause of metabolic syndrome okay yeah uh, apart from that the least metabolic syndrome causes which antipsychotic peri okay they don't cause the metabolic syndrome so 
So the least metabolic syndrome is eripiprazole and ziprasidone. Most common is clozapine. Second most common cause of metabolic syndrome is olanzapine. Olanzapine. Okay. 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 And uh, yeah, this you should know about the about the schizophrenia area. Second is depression. In depression, number one, the neurotransmitter. If they ask the which the most common neurotransmitter involved in depression, it's a serotonin decrease level of serotonin. But dopamine and norepinephrine also decreases. Uh, if they ask which of the following neurotransmitter involved in depression, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, all of the above answer will be all of the above. But if they mention the most common neurotransmitter involved in the depression, then the answer will be serotonin. So all three neurotransmitters get decreased. But among these three, the most common is serotonin. Okay. Aaron Beck was there. Aaron Beck has given the cognitive model. The, the name, the famous name is cognitive triad of Aaron Beck. And in Aaron Beck, he has, uh, he told that the people who are having a, this cognitive triad, they are more prone to they are more vulnerable to go into the depression and these three tried were uh, negative perception about self negative perception about the world and negative perception about the future self currently we say ideas of worthlessness the negative perception about uh, the world we say the helplessness and the about future it's a hopelessness hopelessness okay so sometimes they ask all of the following are uh, come under cognitive triad of our own back except and the fourth option they usually give ideas of guilt ideas of guilt dear student they don't come under cognitive triad of our own back we have ideas of worthlessness helplessness and hopelessness okay another symptoms of depression are what sadness of mood decrease energy loss of interest in day-to-day -day activity okay loss of pleasure in activities which were pleasurable previously like anhedonia okay depression is the most common cause of suicide that you have to remember among psychiatric disorder depression is the most common cause of suicide in depression the male female ratio is one is to two okay onset of depression it is middle age of onset middle age of onset okay we divide the depression mild moderate and severe we have three major criteria and we have a you know seven eight minor criteria among these the mild depression we say two plus two two major criteria and two minor moderate we say two major and three minor and severe we say three major and four minor okay uh, mild to moderate depression usually we use what the ssri ssri like you know sertraline acetylopram phloxetine paroxetine uh, usually they ask the SSRI various side effects they ask the sexual dysfunction usually they ask the sexual dysfunction SSRI they cause they cause the erectile dysfunction and they cause the delayed ejaculation delayed ejaculation okay delayed ejaculation delayed ejaculation uh, we use this side effect as a effect in a premature ejaculation so sometimes they ask the paroxetine we use in a treatment of premature ejaculation because paroxetine has a side effect of what delayed ejaculation which we use as a effect as a effect okay in a severe depression as i mentioned that we have a three major criteria and four minor criteria the basically they increase the serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor they increase the serotonin and they increase the norepinephrine examples are duloxetine velnafaxine and what des velnafaxine velnafaxine and des velnafaxine okay yeah theoretically speaking the, the the guidelines say that all antidepressants are same clinically speaking that the Drug of choice of severe depression is what? SNRI. Serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibit. Okay. Yeah. The another antidepressant, one is we have norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor like what? Bupropion. Bupropion is sexually safe. It doesn't causes any sexual side effect. Okay. It is 
contraindicated in epilepsy and also we use as a anti smoking agent as a anti smoking agent please remember one thing about the sexual side effect they usually ask which antidepressant is safe in as a in sexual side effect the least sexual side effect by bupropion usually they ask this mcq multiple time they have asked so be very careful about it bupropion least then what metazapine and then what then then what ss ri then what so if they ask the least sexual side effect by which antidepressant bupropion uh, the maximum is why what see so according how they ask which what options they give this 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 you know sequence you have to remember okay the bupropion is the least then the metazapine then the venlafaxine then the ssri then the tricyclic antidepressants okay apart from that uh, what they can ask the omega sign and varagat sign they can ask you know just you can see the image also sometime image based question they can ask we have a triangle is the, the triangle over the you know for the frontal lobe omega omega sign because of sadness of effect person you know appear like this so this is a omega sign we say sometimes this is skin you know triangular fold over the upper eyelid that uh, you know where sign so where sign or omega sign seen in seen in depression sometimes they can ask yeah this is uh, about the about the please remember after ischemic heart disease after ischemic heart disease the the who actually by 2020 data who claimed that after ischemic heart disease the depression is a second most common disorder not among psychiatric among all psychiatric and medical illnesses after ischemic heart disease it's a second most common you know diagnosis which has maximum dailies disability adjusted life disability adjusted life years can you imagine how important you know the depression is people are basically lack of awareness acceptance this upriyavaka chakar we are ignoring this psychiatric disorder the among medical and med the, the psychiatric disorder depression after ischemic heart disease is the second most common you know diagnosis or the disorder which causes the maximum dailies means maximum dysfunction in our our life okay the bipolar disorder what they can ask in bipolar disorder we have bipolar disorder type 1 and type 2 type 1 is depression plus mania type 2 depression plus hypomania okay so depression is common just remember we have mania in type 1 and we have what we have a hypomania in type 2 hypomania in type 2 okay that you have to remember uh, in mania what symptoms we have elevation of mood person increase psychomotor activity okay uh, decrease need of sleep so in depression we are not able to sleep but patient wants to sleep but in the in mania person doesn't want to sleep decrease need of sleep there's a grandiose ideas person thinks that he can do is capable of things he can do anything he's you know grandiose ideas flight of idea this is one of the formal thought disorder patient shift from one topic to another topic and association between these topics may or may not be found uh, for making a diagnosis of mania the duration we require at least one week one week for mania and for hypomania hypomania the duration we require what up to four days so up to four days hypomania and the one week or more mania and for making a diagnosis of depression we require the in depression we require the duration is what two weeks so please remember the one month or more schizophrenia two weeks or more depression one week or more mania up to four days hypomania hypomania okay yeah in bipolar disorder basically patient uh, the one more thing you can remember the chromosome 18 and 22 are associated with bipolar disorder that you can remember okay yeah in acute phase the treatment we give the combination of what mood stabilizer 
antipsychotics and benzodiazepine okay and in prophylaxis phase we give only mood stabilizer only mood stabilizer we stop the antipsychotic and benzodiazepine why we continue the mood stabilizer in prophylaxis to prevent relapse to prevent okay to prevent relapse what are the mood stabilizer in mood stabilizer what i'm sure they can ask dear friends and basically we have lithium as a mood stabilizer we have a sodium valproate okay and we have carbazepine we have ox carbazepine demo prigine just but of what what i'm sure they can ask they can ask the lithium causes what abstain anomaly in anomaly okay sodium valproate and neural tube defect carbamazepine ox carbazepine lamotrigine is a drug of choice in pregnancy so if they ask pregnancy the safest mode stabilizer answer is lamotrigine if lamotrigine is not in the option then the better option is what ox carbazepine if ox carbazepine is not then lithium so you have to choose in that sequence the best option is lamotrigine if lamotrigine is not in option then ox carbazepine ox carbazepine is not in option then lithium why because although lithium causes the abstain anomaly but the the, uh, the you know ratio of uh, abstain anomaly caused by lithium is far far lesser compared to the uh, neural tube defect caused by, uh, caused by the sodium valproate and carbamazepine okay so that you have to remember other side effects you know uh, lithium is very important drug again and again they are asking so if they ask the anti suicidal mood stabilizer your answer will be the lithium so lithium is a anti suicidal mood stabilizer and that all we many times we discuss that lithium having a narrow therapeutic index so you have to check the level of lithium when you have to check the level of lithium after 4 to 5 days and after how many hours 12 hours of last dose that you have to remember 12 hours of last dose <coughs> and after starting 4 to 5 days after starting of lithium lithium is very important drug so you have to read the next is the obsessive compulsive and related disorder ocd uh, the it's a new category before ocd we were counting under the umbrella of anxiety disorder now in dsm 5 a separate category of ocd obsessive compulsive and related disorder and what all the disorders we have under obsessive compulsive and related disorder obsessive compulsive disorder body dysmorphic disorder hoarding disorder trichotillomania and excoriation so uh, hoarding disorder having a poor prognosis or you can say worse prognosis why because the erp exposure and response prevention therapy we we use in not effective in hoarding disorder so that you have to remember that it is not effective in hoarding disorder so it has a worse prognosis trichotillomania you know uh, the hair pulling and the excoriation is what skin picking skin picking okay uh, okay Th these are the obsessive compulsive treatment we use the ssri and cbt so the, if they ask you the treatment of choice in ocd the answer is combination of ssri plus cbt or ssri plus exposure and response prevention therapy okay and if they ask the so the treatment of choice if they ask your answer will be erp if they ask the best modality of treatment then best modality is what best modality is combination of ssri plus cbt okay which ssri is best for in ocd fluoxamine so just listen carefully if they ask treatment of choice in ocd answer is exposure and response prevention the best modality of treatment in ocd ssri plus cbt ssri plus cbt okay ssri plus cbt okay then and the if they ask which ssri is best in ocd 
fluoxamine before it was fluoxetine okay anxiety disorder uh, what are the symptoms of anxiety disorder we have uh, increased heart rate or palpitation increased blood pressure we have tremor sweating respiratory difficulty okay the choking sensation the sense of impending doom patient feels that he or she is going to die then we call it a panic attack okay uh, these are the symptoms somatic and psychic symptom the, the treatment of choice again any anxiety disorder the treatment of choice is what behavior therapy behavior therapy basically in anxiety disorder or panic disorder we use what cbt cognitive behavior therapy yes the best modality is combination ssri plus cbt benzodiazepine we use and we use one buspirone one buspirone 5 st 1 a partial five st 1 a partial agonist okay agonist the the phobia basically in anxiety and phobia symptoms are same only in anxiety we have irrational fear and phobia is a rational basically we have various object and person having rational fear so basically that uh, the fear of height is acrophobia the fear of death thanatophobia fear of night nyctophobia that usually they ask fear of closed space claustrophobia the open space the agoraphobia fear of stranger the xenophobia fear of fire pyrophobia fear of germs mesophobia fear of dog the cyanophobia and fear of cat allurophobia okay the, the the combination of ssri plus cbt we use in treatment uh, basically we use the most common behavior therapy we use in anxiety disorder is what the systemic desensitization so there are systemic desensitization there are gradual exposure and we, uh, the, the grading and we have we have what the uh, flooding okay systemic desensitization is the most common uh, type of behavior therapy we use graded exposure and systemic desensitization there is only one difference that in the relaxation exercise is a part of systemic desensitization and relaxation exercise is not a part of gra the graded exposure okay another mcq area they ask narcolepsy in narcolepsy we have uh, four uh, symptoms of narcolepsy we call it a tetrad of narcolepsy sleep attack sleep paralysis cataplexy and hypnagogic hallucination what is the defect in narcolepsy uh, we have a defect in reticular activating system rs okay we have type 1 narcolepsy and we have a type 2 narcolepsy that usually they ask sometime it's a very favorite mcq so be very very careful basically narcolepsy type 1 is the narcolepsy with cataplex and type 2 is what without cataplex without cata the low level of hypocretin we have in type 1 narcolepsy and the hypocretin level is what normal in type 2 that you have to know okay so low level of hypocretin in type 1 and the normal level of hypocretin in type 2 okay the drug of choice if they ask in narcolepsy your answer will be what Vodafone. okay it's a REM sleep disorder narcolepsy is a REM sleep disorder okay and the male female ratio is what one is to one onset is second said is second second decade. okay post-traumatic stress disorder the post-traumatic dis stress dis disorder first we have to make a diagnosis for the first criteria is what catastrophic event person should have some catastrophic event should be there for making a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder catastrophic event by see one we have a stressful event one we have a catastrophic event catastrophic event by definition is an event which causes stress in almost everyone example is what war like you know flood earthquake can you enjoy the earthquake no so the flood the earthquake the 
the war the uh, rape sexual assault the major accidents these are the examples of catastrophic event okay once person having a catastrophic event then then the flashback of these events in the thoughts and dreams then person having a hyper arousal anxiety and depressive symptom and person having a avoidance behavior for making a diagnosis of ptsd these criteria we require up to one month if these criteria are there then we call it a acute stress disorder acute stress disorder acute stress disorder and then after one month up to six months we call it a ptsd so that you have to be very careful okay okay hello yashas yeah so up to one month uh, it's a acute stress dis disorder and one to six months we call it a ptsd before we usually making a diagnosis of ptsd up to six months but we can make even after six months after six months when we making a diagnosis of ptsd after six months we call it a ptsd of delayed on ptsd of delayed set okay uh, nowadays in even icd 11 we have a new concept of ptsd complex PTSD. complex ptsd okay complex PTSD. treatment yes uh, the cbt plus ssri the cbt is a best therapy in ptsd ptsd before we had emdr what is emdr i movement e sensitization and reprocessing okay so eye moment desensitization and reprocessing was a therapy we were using in ptsd but over the time it has been seen that emdr is not a good therapy uh, so we uh, started using cbt and cbt is the best therapy in in pt okay yeah addiction psychiatry is a, a little really important topic so addiction psychiatry we will just go through the alcohol we have alcohol withdrawal seizure again and again they are asking and we have alcohol withdrawal delirium and we have alcoholic hallucinosis hallucinosis alcohol withdrawal seizure the peak is 12 to 48 hours okay the, the treatment is iv diazepam just you have okay so iv diazepam peak you have to remember they will give you the option 12 to 48 hours alcohol withdrawal delirium or delirium tremens the peak is what three to five days but it can go up to seven days the drug of choice is what long acting benzodiazepine long acting benzodiazepines like chlorodiazepoxide and diazepam okay alcoholic hallucinosis uh, within 24 hours so 2 3 mcq if they ask the uh, which of the following complicated withdrawal symptom we call them complicated withdrawal symptom uh, appear earliest answer is alcoholic hallucination in alcohol withdrawal uh, delirium also we have hallucination in alcoholic hallucinosis also we have auditory hallucination then what's the difference between them that the difference is that there is no impairment of consciousness in alcoholic hallucinosis the the, the cardinal feature the primary feature of alcohol withdrawal delirium is what impairment of consciousness but there is no impairment of consciousness in alcoholic hallucination okay the treatment is antipsychotics in alcoholic hallucinosis okay okay so this this table again and again they are asking most common withdrawal symptom in alcohol most common withdrawal symptom in alcohol is what tremor okay tremor in opioid uh, you know what they can ask opioid be very careful opioid the uh, rhinorrhea lacrimation diarrhea high these blood pressure these are the withdrawal symptom of of opioid okay uh, i told you that uh, the long term therapy we use in opioid methadone and the uh, buprenorphine okay the short term therapy we use the maintenance therapy we use the uh, 
the buprenorphin and methadone in a in a long term uh, the maintenance therapy in in opioid okay nicotine just use uh, just the in nicotine we have nicotine replacement therapy nicotine replacement therapy we use patch we use lozenges we use the gums we use the inhaler we don't use what tablet so nicotine replacement therapy doesn't come in a tablet form okay that varenicillin varenicillin is a tablet we use the in in nicotine dependent patient okay varenicillin alpha 4 beta 2 partial or beta 2 partial okay cannabis we have one of the substance which causes more psychological dependence than physiological the most common substance which causes psychological dependence is what lysergic acid then we have cocaine then we have cannabis then we have amphetamine okay so cannabis causes more psychological dependence than physical we have cannabis you know the amotivation syndrome the flashback phenomenon okay and run amok run amok under the influence of cannabis person having a suicidal or person becomes suicidal or homicidal homicidal okay that you have to remember that the gaming this addiction gaming addiction and gambling these are the two new criteria diagnostic criteria has been added in addiction psychiatry what gambling you are khelna and gaming addiction your pubg and everything now comes under under addiction psychiatry okay attention deficit hyperactivity disorder uh, before we were making diagnosis up to seven years now the new please remember in dsm-5 and icd-11 we say up to 12 years there are three symptoms inattention hyperactivity impulsivity the drug of choice is methylphenidate if the age of the child is six year or above okay and up to up to six years what, what you know which is the drug we are using extra why we don't use methylphenidate below six year so the serious side effect of methylphenidate is what growth growth okay. we use therapy but the the main treatment of choice in attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is what the medicine a six year or above is methylphenidate and the below six year the dextro amphetamine dextro okay mental retardation or nowadays we call it an intellectual disability what's a normal iq the normal iq is what 90 or above uh, you know less than 70 we call it a mental retardation 50 to 69 mild uh, 35 to 49 is moderate 20 to 34 severe and less than 20 is what profound profound okay that you have to remember usually they ask that iq area in this eating disorder they ask anorexia nervosa male female ratio is 1 is to 10 the diagnosis we usually making body weight is less than 85 percent of normal weight body image disturbance three months history of amenorrhea this criteria currently in dsm 5 and icd 11 this criteria has been removed three months history of amenorrhea okay uh, apart from that the they don't eat they avoid the carbohydrate they avoid the fatty food they do the vigorous exercise gymming running swimming okay and the anorexia nervosa the complication in anorexia nervosa is what patient will have anemia patient have a decrease bone density okay the person will have then you go okay basically it's a it's a golden hair because of malnourishment the, the golden hair are like baby like hair we call it a lenugo so anemia decrease bone density lenugo these are the you know complications in the in the anorexia nervosa the treatment is yes, cbt and we give the ssri ssri okay usually we give the cipro heptadine it's an appetite stimulant increases the appetite in anorexia nervosa but the main treatment is what cognitive behavior therapy bulimia nervosa yes person will have a binge eating the taken the food more than the usual at a given period of time and then the compensatory behavior compensatory behavior like self induced vomiting okay self induced vomiting the person uses the enema person uses the laxatives okay 
एग्जेटिव वी कॉल इट अ पर्जिंग बी यू कॉल इट अ पर्जिंग बिहेवियर पर्जिंग बिहेवियर वॉट आर द कॉम्प्लिकेशन वेर द पर्सन इन बुलिमिया नरोजा विल हैव डेंटल कैरीज ओके इनमल इरोजन पर्सन विल हैव द हाइपर ट्रॉफी ऑफ एनक्रियाज एंड टैरोटिट ओके हाइपोकेलेमिक हाइपोक्लोरेमिक एल्केलोसिस हाइपोकेलेमिक हाइपोक्लोरेमिक एल्केलोसिस बिकॉज ऑफ सेल्फ इंड्यूस्ड वॉमिटिंग ओके द ट्रीटमेंट यस अगेन सी बी टी एंड एस एस आर आई वी यूज सी बी टी वी यूज हेयर बींस ईटिंग डिसऑर्डर इट्स अ मोस्ट कॉमन टाइप ऑफ डिसऑर्डर मोस्ट कॉमन टाइप ऑफ ईटिंग डिसऑर्डर ओके ओनली बींस ईटिंग देयर देर इज नो कंपनसेटरी बिहेवियर no compensatory behavior only binge eating only binge eating nowadays we have one more uh, avoidant restrictive food intake disorder okay the avoidant active food intake disorder this is a disorder the new diagnostic entity has been included in DSM five and I ICD eleven. Most common type of eating disorder is what binge eating disorder. Okay, hypochondriasis. The new name of hypochondriasis is what illness anxiety disorder. The preoccupation regarding serious illness, minor benign symptom or the serious you know the minor benign symptom or normal physiological function appear like a serious illness to the the patient. The new name of hypochondriasis is what illness anxiety disorder. Personality disorder. In personality disorder, dear students, we have three cluster: cluster A, paranoid, schizoid, and schizotypal; cluster B, narcissistic, borderline, histrionic, and antisocial; cluster D is dependent, anxious, avoidant, obsessive, compulsive personality disorder. Minor, minor criteria you can remember. Sometimes they even ask cluster A, cluster B, and cluster C. Okay, and the stages of grief the given by the Kubler Ross, the dubda. denial anger bargain depression and acceptance person initially remains in denial then the person gets angry that why you have chosen me only then person starts bargaining with the god why me why not other then person you know goes into the depression and last he or she accepts that yes it has happened and i have to live with it stages of grief given by kobler ross mental status examination you will go the perception we have a two type of uh, you know disorder in perception uh, illusion uh, person having a false perception you know the misinterpretation of the normal stimuli okay stimuli is there but there is a you know abnormal interpretation the example common example the rope appear like a snake snake okay rassi saap ki tarah dikhai deti what is hallucination the false perception without stimuli so in illusion we have stimuli but the stimuli we misinterpret in hallucination there is no stimuli okay what are the properties of hallucination the stimulus is absent uh, it appear like a real and vivid it is not under voluntary control and it occur in a objective space it occur in objective space okay pseudo hallucination occur in a there are many similarity between hallucination and pseudo hallucination but hallucination occur in objective space pseudo hallucination occur in subjective space most common type of hallucination auditory okay uh, in schizophrenia we have organic brain disorder the most common type is what visual hallucination cocaine has a tactile hallucination also we call call it a cocaine bugs magnan phenomena okay uh, what is a perseveration repetition of a same words beyond a point of relevance repetition of a same word beyond a point of relevance in mental status examination another heading is what possession in possession we have a three obsession comes under possession of you know under disorder of possession that you have to remember many time they ask so obsession comes under possession and thought insertion thought withdrawal and thought broadcast also we have under under possession okay in the mental status examination under content under thought content of mental status examination what we have delusion so delusion comes under thought content and obsession comes under possession of thought possession of thought we have various delusions delusion of persecution patient feels that somebody wants to kill him delusion of infidelity or we call it a othello syndrome that partner partner is cheating with him 
delusion of love erotomania or we call it a de clerembault syndrome the person from higher status is in love with her or him okay and delusion of grandiosity megalomania the person think that like i am a god he he thinks that he is very unique he is special he is an influential person about power money okay delusion of nihilism person think that everything is going to be end or we call it a cotard syndrome okay cotard syndrome is an extreme form of delusion of nihilism okay person think that organs are rotten many time this i'm seeing they they are asking what are the difference between psychosis and neurosis in psychosis insight is absent neurosis insight is present the delusions and hallucinations we have the impaired in uh, psychosis and we have preserved in neurosis okay examples of psychosis is mania bipolar affective disorder and schizophrenia example of neurosis is what ocd anxiety phobia ptsd comes under neurosis okay various formal thought disorder we have like derailment tangentiality circumstantiality and neologies you just can go through the definition of these psychosexual stages of freud just remember sometime they can ask oral phase 0 to 1 year anal phase 1 to 3 year uh, the phallic is what 3 to 5 years phallic phase in you know we uh, identity the person identify the gender okay in boy there is a castration anxiety uh, the the in girl there is a penis envy uh, attached uh, attached to the mother the boy is attached to the mother and there is a development of what oedipus complex in girls that there, there is a development of what electra complex that you have to that you have to remember okay yeah elic and then we have latent phase 6 to 11 years and then we have a genital so there is a oral anal phallic and then the latent and genital okay just remember oral phase if the person having a anal phase if the person doesn't pass, uh, pass smoothly from uh, another phase it de development of ocd occur in a anal phase development of schizophrenia okay and substance use disorder substance use disorder occur in a oral phase okay phallic disorder phallic phase we have a what development of what dissociative disorder that you have to remember okay yeah, that you have to remember and just remember that one we sometimes they ask the you know dysthymia what is dysthymia dysthymia person is having a two years of depressive symptom but depressive symptom are not severe enough to make a diagnosis of depression okay the new name of dysthymia is what persistent depressive and depressive new name of dysthymia persistent. i try to i try to uh, you know cover as much as possible but in short period of time we can cover that much only that's why i try to make a, this one liner so we you know cover as much as possible you know the time was 45 minutes but we almost use the one hour so dear students just whenever you get the time you tell your friends go through these slides these slides will be before exam you know many things i have covered so this uh, this will be you quickly in one hour you can uh, cover the psychiatry okay and don't ignore the minor subject minor subjects are very important in any exam including fmg okay okay then best of luck see you after the exam please try to send the mcq uh, after uh, after exam as much as possible so we can discuss as soon and we have on a ew platform we have this fmg test also so please uh, don't miss this test okay five tests for fmg are are there okay okay then good luck uh, you know best of luck uh, just still you have some time try to revise don't uh, you know read new things now uh, try to revise as much as possible basic and minor subject of uh, you know backbone of any exam especially in fmg they are very important basic and minor subject okay and just what you have done till now just try to revise sleep well eat well if you have a time study well best of luck bye bye good night